This is the 1991 Mitsubishi GTO and it's one of the hottest cars to come out of Japan in the early 90s. And today I'm going to show you why it's more than just the car Jackie Chan drove in the movie Thunderbolt. But first, a quick history lesson. I want you to close your eyes and think back to the early 90s when I wasn't born yet. Japan was in a sports car, grand tourist, space race, and was coming up with icons left and right, like the Toyota Supra, the Honda NSX, Mazda RX-7, and the Nissan GTR. So with that kind of competition, Mitsubishi had to pull out the big guns. And this is what they came up with. The GTO was never a limited run model, but sadly with the you know, state of ownership in Singapore and the passing of time, what we're looking at is one of just six GTOs left in Singapore. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> so let's begin with what's under the bonnet. Mitsubishi GTO received a 3-litre twin-turbo V6 from the factory with 276 horsepower. Now I say 276 horsepower in quotation marks because if you don't know, in the early 90s, the Japanese car makers had this sort of gentleman's agreement to not make cars with more than 276 horsepower to prevent a dangerous horsepower race. I mean, the car makers put the power in anyway. They just decided to just declare, you know, it had 276 horsepower. So in the case of this car, it was found that the GTO actually produced well over 300 horsepower. That meant 0 to 100 in 5 seconds and onto a top speed of well over 250 kilometers an hour. That would be exciting today, let alone almost 30 years ago. But this car had more than just power. It also had stuff like four-wheel steering, electronically adjustable suspension, all-wheel drive, exhaust with valves in them, active aerodynamics, features which, may I remind you, are only becoming commonplace on supercars today. So imagine back in the 90s, this car was way ahead of the curve. And unsurprisingly, one of the most advanced cars to come out of Japan at the time. And you know, with the intakes on the side skirts, it just looks the business. Don't, don't look at me, look at the car. Look at the car. Alright, stepping into the interior of the Mitsubishi GTO and the first thing you notice are these nice plush seats. These big, cushy, almost lounge chair-like seats which are, by the way, fully electric on the driver's side. And of course, in the centre, you have the lovely six-speed manual transmission. Look at that. Original gear knob and everything. It's beautiful. Work of art. Just above that, we can see the switch for the active aero system and the cruise control system They're in the middle. And above that, we can see this old-school. Look at that. It's just retro cool, right? This old-school backlit 8-bit digital screen is what it probably would have been cutting edge at the time. And you know, you can control and see your climate control systems from that screen. And just up from that screen, we see this beautifully implemented gauge display for all your various gauges. You have your clock, water temperature, oil temperature, and boost. That's the most important one. Over here, we have the toggle switch for the electronically controllable suspension. You can toggle it between tour and sport. And down here, we have the toggle for the exhaust valves. We got normal and silent for when you don't want to wake up your neighbours. Moving on to the centre of the car, we have as what my lovely co-presenter would call the dick vent. Which, this makes it the first car I've seen to have the dick vent. And who doesn't love a dick vent? And in the centre of the steering wheel, we can see the multimeter controls in quite an unusual place. Usually, you know, they're up here on the steering wheel. But on the GTO, nah, they're down here in the middle. Now, they don't work because we're running an aftermarket head unit. But back in this day, this would have been pretty cool. So that about sums it up for the front of the car. And in back, we have the rear seats. Yep, you heard me right. This two-door coupe has rear seats. And since people on the internet love to see folks try and climb into tight rear seats, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So let's go. Oh. Alright, so into the rear seat of the GTO and well, now I can sit in once I try and put the seat back, you can quickly start to see a lack of space. I'm 1.8 meters tall, ladies, 
And obviously, unless the driver is very short, this is not going to go back very far. So the Mitsubishi GTO, while it might have four seats, is only useful as a family car if your family is full of amputees. So here we are in the Mitsubishi GTO. We're going to take her for a quick drive and see how this icon from the 90s gets on in today's world. It's not slow. <laughs> oh god, that's 30 years old. This thing moves, right? It is not slow. So we're just taking the Mitsubishi GTO for a quick drive around and see how she drives. So far, it's honestly, it's pretty easy to drive. It's a pretty good thing you didn't see me stall on camera. So that's always a plus. But the clutch is pretty light. Doesn't feel too scary. Um, steering's actually kind of heavy and uh, it's got good feel. You can sense a bit of double leg, right? You know, it's it's a it's an old 90s double car, so you can feel not very much, not very much, and then you feel the kick come in. But my god, it, it's not slow. I, I'm I'm not looking at my speed, but <laughs> for a car that's 30 years old, man. I mean, the owner has kept this in such great condition, and it's got what just under 39,000 km since new. Right, so my time with this gorgeous blast of the past is coming to an end. And I don't know if I, I, I don't know if this is a car that you know I could perhaps live with or it's a car that I would buy. But my god, am I glad I got the chance to drive this car. And if you don't take my word for just how cool this car is, the owner of this car has not just one, but two of these gorgeous machines. And if you feel compelled after this video to go out and buy the nearest GTO you can find, it's too bad. This guy's not selling. Motorist.